Welcome to Learning Science on NTC. Today's lesson is on calculations on half of half-life of radioactive materials. I am your presenter, Alex Ngumbi, and we are still looking at our topic, radioactivity. Okay, so to begin with, let us look at the outcomes for this lesson. What is it that is expected of us? What are we supposed to be doing during and after this lesson? So the first thing is... Um, at the end of this lesson or during this lesson, you should be able to state the equation used to calculate half-life of a substance. Okay, then the second outcome is that you should be able to calculate the half-life of a substance. <coughs> Provided you are given the initial amount or you are given the count rate, time elapsed and the remaining amount or activity. You should also be able to calculate decayed amount or activity provided half-life, time elapsed, and the initial amount is given. So these are our outcomes, expected outcomes for this lesson. So let us quickly go into an example, example one. So in this example, we are told a certain radioactive substance has an initial mass of 40 milligrams. After a period of 40 minutes, only 2.5 milligrams of the sample remains. The first question A is calculate the half-life of the substance. Then the second question B is how much of the sample decayed during this period. So you can see that in this question, we have this outcome that is looking at calculating the half-life of a substance provided you are given the initial amount, the count rate or count rate, the time elapsed and the remaining amount or activity. That's where the first question is coming from, where you are supposed to calculate half-life. The second part of this question, how much of the sample decayed is being is covering this objective that is talking about calculating the decayed amount or activity, provided you are given the half-life of a sample, the time elapsed, and the initial amount. Okay, so quickly let us look at the solutions to this question. So, <clears throat> the first thing for us to be able to answer these two questions is to find out how many half-lives are there in these 40 minutes of this sample. We do not know the half-life, but we know the total time that elapsed, that it is 40 minutes. So, we can actually calculate or determine the number of half-lives in this total time that elapsed. So there are several ways in which we can actually determine the number of half-lives. Determining the number of half-lives is the initial point, it's the beginning point where we can now calculate the half-life and if we have the number of half-lives we can now know how much of the sample decayed during this period. So to begin with we are going to calculate the number of half-lives for the sample. Okay, so uh, <clears throat> the solution. So the equation we are going to use to calculate half-life of a sample, to calculate the number of half-lives of a sample is this. Now this equation, in this equation, capital letter N stands for the amount that is remaining. It could be activity or it could be the amount. Like in this case, this question is not dealing with activity. It is dealing with the amounts. So N is the amount that is remaining after that time has elapsed. Then N naught or N zero is the amount we had when we just started or before that 40 minutes elapsed. It actually at the beginning point of the 40 minutes. So when time is zero, what amount did we have? So this is the initial amount. And then we have half there and letter N as the power or index now letter n is standing for the number of half lives so we can proceed as follows the amount remaining when we go to the question is 2.5 because we are told the only 2.5 milligrams of the sample remains so that's the the amount remaining 2.5 milligrams is equal to the initial amount we are told that the sample had an initial amount of 40 milligrams so that's our initial mass or amount, that's 40 milligrams, then this is a constant half and power n, and that's the n we are looking for, the number of half-lives. So 
<coughs> from this point we can divide both sides of this equation this and this by 40 so that we get rid of this 40 here and just remain with half to the power n so this 2.5 is divided by 40 and this is equal to here we just remain with half to the power n because 40 has divided itself so when we reduce this we get 2.5 divided by 40 is 1 over 16 which is equal to 1 over 2 to the power n so at this level we can use the idea of indices if we want <coughs> or we can go the logarithm way so using the idea of indices <coughs> we express excuse me for that <coughs> so we express 16 1 over 16 as 16 to the power negative 1. I think this is mathematics from grade 10. So this is equal to, again, this half is expressed as 2 to the power negative n because it's no longer a fraction. After that, we can now um, treat this 16, express it as a number with to the power, I mean, with a base of 2. So if 16 is going to have a base of 2, then it is going to be 2 to the power 4. Now that power 4 will be multiplied by the negative 1 that is already there, and it gives us 2 to the power negative 4 is equal to 2 to the power negative 1. We do the same here, express half as a number with a base of 2, so it becomes 2 to the power negative n. So at this level, we can conclude to say n is equal to 4. Since these two and these two will divide, or in short, they are the same, so we are saying negative n is equal to negative 4. And we can drop the negatives or simply divide throughout by negative 1. So therefore, the number of half-lives is equal to 4. So this is one of the ways in which we can determine the number of half-lives. Um, or better still, if you have an idea of logarithms, you get the formula just like we started. You put the amounts. The amount remaining is 2.5 milligrams. And... Uh, the initial amount that the amount we started with is 40 milligrams and this is equal to 1 over 2 to the power n. Now, at this point, you divide both sides by 40. This time, we are not going to express our answer in terms of fractions, but we are going to use decimals. So, when 2.5 is divided by 40, we are going to get 0 0.0625. And 40 divided by 40 here will remain with the 1. And it simply means this would disappear from this side. And then here we are going to say 1 divided by 2 and we get a 0 0.5 to the power n. In short, we will express 1 over 2 as a decimal, which is 0 0.5 to the power n. From this point, we can introduce logarithms on both sides. So here we have log, and this is the log to the base 10, so we don't show 10. If you remember, if you have an idea of logarithms, or we simply say log, <coughs> excuse me. So this is <coughs> log 0 0.0625 is equal to log 0 0.5 to the power n. So we proceed from here. We want to bring this n down. So again, I'm depending on ideas of logarithms. If you have an idea of how logarithms operate, if you have um, n here, when you bring it, you can actually bring it in front of log here. Okay, so if n disappears there, he, from here, then it will find itself in front here of the log. So instead of writing log 0 0.5 to the power n, we will write as n log 0 0.5. That's uh, how logarithms operate. So we have log 0 0.0625, which we had um, here, here after dividing 2.5 by 40, and then introduce log, so log 0 0.625 and then we bring the n down, it becomes n log 0 0.5. At this level, since we are looking for n, we divide n, we divide both sides by log 0 0.5. So it means n is going to be log 0 0.0625, log 0 0.0625 divided by log 0 0.5. And when you cut out this, uh, computation using a calculator, your value of log 0 0.0625 divide, divided by log 0 0.5 is going to be 4. So n is 4, just like the way we found the n here. So it will be the same value, 4, or you use this formula, it will still give you the same value of n, which is 
equal to 4. Or still, you can find the value of n by reducing the given mass of a sample in halves. This is actually a very simple way of finding the number of half lives. You simply say, since we know the initial amount is 40 milligrams, if this amount decays by half, since we know that half life is time taken for a sample to decay by half, so when one half life, we are looking for the number of half lives in the total period that elapsed, which is 40 minutes. So if one half life elapses, then the 40 milligrams will be will remain 20 milligrams. Then after another half life, the second half life, we are going to remain with 10 milligrams. Then after the third half life, we will remain with 5 milligrams. After the fourth half life, we are going to have 2.5. Now. We will not proceed from 2.5 to get 1.25 because actually we have arrived at the amount that was mentioned in the question that this is what remained. So we end here and count the number of half lives. So 1, 2, 3, 4. So we have the number of half lives. So it depends on which method. If you are using this method, please, you need to indicate clearly that this is what you are doing, just like the way I have expressed it here. All right? So after that, we have found the number of half-lives. Now we can use a very simple formula to find the half-life. So half-life of a sample is equal to total time elapsed over number of half-lives. So in this particular case, the half-life of a sample is the total time that elapsed, 40 minutes, divided by the number of half-lives, which in this particular case is... Um, so 40 minutes is the total time that elapsed divided by the number of half lives, which is 4, and we get 10 minutes. Okay? Now, <clears throat> we have found the half life of a sample that it is 10 minutes. So we can go back to our question to see what the other question was talking about. That's B. Okay? So, uh, part B of our question, part B of our question was asking us to calculate how much of the sample decayed during this period. It's not talking about how much actually remained, but it is talking about how much decayed. Okay? So, what we do is, to find the amount that decayed, you simply subtract from the initial amount you had, you subtract what you have remained with. Then the difference is actually what decayed. So, we can uh, <clears throat> look at the solution here. Uh, in fact, from here it's very simple. You can see we had 40 milligrams, then the final mass is 2.5 milligrams. So what has decayed is 40 milligrams minus 2.5, which is uh, expressed here as 40 milligrams minus 2.5 milligrams, which is 37.5 milligrams, as the amount that decayed. If the question was saying, find the amount that remained, then it is just that 2.5, but the question can't be phrased like that, because in this particular case, we were already given the amount that remained. Okay, so let's look at uh, an example from a past paper. Uh, like I you saw from the beginning, our lesson includes um, our lesson actually includes solutions from past papers. So we want to look at how we can actually solve questions from past papers. So let's look at this simple question um, <clears throat> from a past paper from the multiple choice part. So this one was actually question 19, and it reads, a radioactive substance has a mass of 600 grams and a half-life of 12 years. How much of the substance decays after 36 years? Okay, so how do we solve that one? So we see, using this formula, now by now I, I believe you understand that what the formula stands for. So N means the remaining amount, N O or N naught means the initial amount, and N small letter is the number of half lives. So even before we proceed, we can actually find the number of half lives in this particular question. We are told the total time that elapsed is 36 years, and we are told that the half life of the sample is 12 years. If you go back to the question, that's what it actually says. It says the half life of the sample is 12 years, and the the substance, how much of this substance decays after 36 years. So this is the total time elapsed and this is the half-life of the sample. So you go back to, you find N, making the subject of the formula. From this equation we used here, 
half life is equal to total time elapsed over n now making the subject of the formula it gives us n is equal to total time elapsed over half life so 36 years over 12 years gives us 3 so 3 is the number of half lives so we can pick this 3 and then <clears throat> put it in this equation where the initial amount is what we are looking i mean the the final amount that will remain is what we are looking for this question is not asking how much decayed it is asking what remained so sorry 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 this question is also asking us what decayed so we have initial amount i mean amount that remained is equal to initial amount which is 600 multiplied by half to the power n but the value of n is 3 so when we proceed using basic mathematics we find that uh, n is equal to 75 grams so after finding that n is 75 grams this is actually the amount that remained but we want what decayed so since the question is asking for what decayed so you proceed so this is the explanation i made here to say 75 grams of the radioactive substance remained to find the amount that decayed we subtract what remained from the initial amount so 600 grams was our initial amount we subtract 75 grams and we get 525 grams as the amount that decayed so in this particular question the correct option was d 525 grams all right so <clears throat> from there <clears throat> this is an exercise for you actually to do and it reads before that there's this question in our next i mean there's this statement here in our next lesson, <coughs> we will be looking at graphs of radioactive decay. So, a graphs of radioactive decay is actually another way of calculating, determining how much has decayed, at what rate is it decaying, and also how much is remaining, apart from the equation that we have used. So, for your own activity exercise, you can go through this question. It is also from a past paper question. So, it reads, a radioactive element X with the uh, neutron number 223 and the proton number 98 emits one beta particle followed by two beta particles. What is a beta particle? You get one mark if you explain that. Write the nucleon number and the proton number of the remaining nuclide after the two emissions. You get two marks. You rely on the equations we did on, on, uh, on the radioactive decay to be able to answer these questions. C, a 400 grams radioactive substance have life have, has half life for four years uh, on a graph paper. Okay, for this part where we are we'll be doing the graph paper, we leave it for now. After we do our next lesson on graphs of radioactivity of radioactive decay, then I'll repeat this question, this part, so that we'll be able to answer it. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching up to the end. I wish you all the best as you prepare for your exams if you are writing or if you are not writing and you know someone who is writing, please, you should re always remember that sharing is caring. Share this video, let someone who is uh, writing their O-level science exam this year pass or be helped to pass their exams. Thank you so much. Remember to like our page NTC and to share our Facebook page NTC. See you in the next lesson.